Stephen Riley, I guess in New York, it is an epicenter. It is Wuhan-like. And then all of a sudden, we speak of Atlanta. All of a sudden, we speak of New Orleans and the Mardi Gras parade as well. Going back, not in this 20th century, but going back to 17th century, 16th century study, how do viruses spread? So it, it's difficult to be absolutely sure. I think what we're seeing in large countries now, like the, the US, um, is probably quite a few independent seeding events. So um, <clears throat> once, there are, once there's lots and lots of genetic data, we, we may be able to trace this back, but it's likely a lot of independent seeding um, and then a slow build. So you know we're noticing it, or, or it's becoming very prominent in some cities before <laughs> we get the same reports from others. And that's probably due to a, a, a seeding some time ago and then a slow build, I would imagine. Out on uh, YouTube, there's a spectacular video, folks, from Number File. I put it out yesterday. I'll do it again today, which is three differential equations showing the dynamics that Professor Riley is expert in. Where are we in that continuum right now in continental Europe, in London, in America? Where are we in the mixture of those uh, mathematics of contagion, of size of those infected, and indeed of deaths? So we are, unfortunately, probably both the, the US and the UK, we're in, an, in the early exponential phase where it's rising as rapidly as possible. But the thing to remember about those models is they assume that we don't have very large behavior changes. So the peaks that have been seen in China and, and South Korea and places like that came much earlier and were much lower than those simple models would have predicted. Um, Dr. Riley, there are a number of uh, studies, and actually there are almost hundreds of studies, it feels like, each day, saying that actually the virus may not be as severe as we think it is. I know you were worried about that. Are you worried because it's not true, or are you worried because then people don't stay at home? Um, I, I'm worried. It, uh, true and false is a tough thing for a scientist to say. There's an awful lot of evidence out there. It's some, it's a little bit difficult to synthesize, but we've done a lot of work. And this is a very severe virus. It's much, much more severe than any flu since 1918. So <laughs> we have lots of evidence to support that. I could, we could chat about that for a few minutes, what the different bits of evidence are. Um, the fact that we don't have one perfect, clean study that shows it as in a couple of numbers, that's, that's not a good enough reason to pretend that it's not a very severe virus. So who should we listen to as experts? Is it, you know, the World Health Organization? Is, is there one source that you would, you know, there are even questions on whether once you get it, you're immune. Who can answer that for us? It, um, so the World Health Organization are a great source. And, and for things like severity and the type of interventions that you should be taking, they've been very clear on this for, for a long time. You can go back and read their China mission report um, from, from quite a few weeks ago. Um, on some of the other things, you, we have to also accept a bit of genuine uncertainty. We've known about this virus for three months. I would love to tell you that I know for sure how long immunity will last. It will be long enough that you right. don't need to worry for a little bit, but right. how, long it, how, how long it lasts is difficult. Professor, we've got time for one more question, and let me bring it to the emotion in Washington and across America uh, today. We have a president who wants the country to get back to work. He's going county by county. We have a real, the son of a re commercial real estate developer trying to figure out how to manufacture ventilators. How do we get an urgency out of the administration that matches experts like Dr. Fauci and yourself? I, I think you've got to ask them why they think it will peak. It, the cases are going up or they're going down. At the moment they're going up, what, why do we think it will peak? It's going to peak if we do really good interventions and we check that they're working. We can't try them for a little bit and hope that they've worked. We've got to keep them on, make sure they're good, and then see in the case data that they have worked. It, otherwise, I don't know how people would expect the peak to, to be soon and to be low. That, those are my concerns.